Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. I hope and pray that you and your families had a, a most wonderful Pascha and are in the midst of a beautiful, bright week. I know that uh, for many of us, especially us clergy, it was bittersweet because we were celebrating the resurrection, but we were able to celebrate the resurrection with you, our family. And so it was a real experience of haromolipi, which is one of my favorite words, which means a joyful sorrow. Because even if uh, we're unable to gather together, uh, Christ is risen. Death has been trampled down upon by death, and we have a hope, an eternal hope. Uh, so before we turn to St. Sophroni, and his final section, which will take us a few weeks, on the Jesus Prayer. I wanted to just read a, a, a short section from uh, St. Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain. Uh, this is from his, his book, A Handbook of Spiritual Counsel. And there's, there's a, a short section where he speaks about the Jesus Prayer. And it's, it's uh, one of the, the most simple yet beautiful uh, expressions of the Jesus prayer that, that I've really read anywhere. Let me again, for a third time, beseech you to have Jesus as the sweet contemplation of your heart. Let Jesus be the preoccupation of your tongue. Let Jesus be the honorable shape and idea in your mind. In brief, let Jesus be your breath and never grow tired of calling upon Jesus. From such a perpetual and most sweet memory of Jesus, those great theological virtues, faith, hope, and love, will grow and mature and become great trees in your heart. Know that when a lover is far from his beloved, there is no other consolation for him but to constantly remember the name of the beloved person. When Emperor Leo the Wise was banished from Constantinople, his mother found some consolation in repeating his name constantly, My Leo, my Leo, my son. She spoke these words so often that the parrot who heard them learned to repeat them. Thus the soul that loves Jesus but cannot see and enjoy him because he is in heaven and not present cannot be consoled in any other manner except by constant remembrance of his holy name, calling him always with love and tears and pain of heart, my Jesus, my beloved Jesus. This is why Abba Isaac told us, when the mind is moved to remember God, the heart is directly moved in love, and the eyes produce many tears. It is the habit of love to shed tears when remembering the beloved person. So I almost feel like I should just call it quits after that. Uh, but uh, we will we'll get into uh, the section three on prayer by St. Sophron. So we're beginning on page 148. The Jesus Prayer for all times and occasions. Whoever really believes that the gospel commandments were given by the one true God, from this very belief draws strength to live in the image of Christ. The believer allows no critical approach to the Lord's word, but looks to it for judgment. Like this he recognizes himself as a sinner and grieves over his wretched state. Absence of grief for one's sin indicates that one has not yet been granted the vision of how man was conceived before the creation of the world. The truly repentant sinner does not seek after sublime contemplation. He is totally preoccupied with the battle against sin, against the passions. Only after being cleansed from the passions, still as yet incompletely, naturally and without constraint to do, uh, unsuspected spiritual horizons open, illumined by light. They open before him. The mind and the heart are raptured by divine love. Then is our nature reformed, which was fractured by the fall, and the doors to the realm of immortality are set ajar. Uh, a beautiful echo of that icon of the Anastasy, where Christ is, is standing upon the broken doors to Hades, having opened up this realm of immortality. The way to holy contemplation is through repentance. So long as we are possessed by somber pride out of character with God, the light in which is no darkness at all, we are not accepted into his eternity. But this passion is peculiar, peculiarly subtle, 
and we ourselves have not the power to discern its presence in us of woe. Hence our assiduous prayer, cleanse thou me from secret faults, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins, let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. None of us, sons of Adam, clearly perceive our sins. Only at times of enlightenment by divine light are we freed from these dreadful fetters. And if this does not come about, it is well to cry out with tears, O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Earnest obedience to Christ's commandments involves encountering every possible phenomenon of the spiritual cosmic sphere. By himself, man is incapable of either resisting or clearly discerning what destroys and what redeems. In despair, he will call upon the name of the living God, and blessed will he be if a ray of light shines upon him from the unapproachable realm of divinity, which will reveal the true nature of every phenomenon. But if this light has not come yet, he must not be alarmed, but pray vigorously, O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon me, and saving strength will surely descend on him. So he's, he's speaking uh, much more about this obedience to the commandments, uh, this trying to get one's life uh, in tune with the gospel commands of our Lord, uh, which is infinitely more important than any sort of technique or, or breathing exercise. Um, as I think I mentioned in a previous video, the, the light of prayer needs to have the oil of, of good works. And by good works, uh, I, I mean almost entirely those works of love. Love especially for one's neighbor. That there's the, the mystery of the sacrament of the Eucharist. There's this mystery, the sacrament of prayer, which we encounter Christ through his name. But there's also the mystery and the sacrament of the neighbor. And all three of these are, are necessary. Um, and yet I think we so often latch onto one and neglect the other two, or have two but neglect the third. But they're always related. So if we're going to come to church and receive communion, if we're going to really strive to practice the Jesus prayer, and yet we're not going to forgive our neighbor who offends us, or uh, refuse to say a comforting word to someone who's hurt because it's an inconvenience, then I believe we'll lose the grace that has sustained us in the other two areas. We need to, to struggle in all three. Continuous Saint Sophroni on page 149. At the outset of our ascetic struggle, we do not discern the ways directed to us by God. We try to avoid painful effort, the fiery trial. We can continue in an excruciating state of not understanding why God, all perfect love, at times allows the way to him to become fearful. We beseech him to open to us the mystery of the path to salvation. Gradually our mind is enlightened and our heart gathers strength to follow Christ and through our insignificant sufferings join him in his sufferings. It is imperative that we should experience both pain and horror. The depths of being are to be disclosed to us and for us to become capable of the love commanded of us. In the absence of suffering, man remains spiritually lazy, half asleep, devoid of Christ. Aware of this, when our heart becomes like an extinct volcano, we warm it up by invoking the name of Christ. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon me. And the flame of divine love will indeed touch upon the heart. Succeeding in the Jesus prayer means attaining eternal life. In the very grave moments of the breakup of our physical organism, the prayer, O Jesus Christ, clothes our soul. When our brain stops functioning and all other prayers become difficult to remember and pronounce, the light of knowledge of God proceeding from the name which we know in intimately will, continually, will continue imperceptible in our spirit. Having witnessed the death of my fathers who died in prayer, I have a strong hope that heavenly peace, which passeth all understanding, 
will embrace us forever. O Jesus, save me. O Jesus Christ, have mercy, save me. O Jesus, save me. O Jesus, my God. Amen. Christos Anesti, and I pray you have a beautiful continuation of your bright week.